Hey guys, it's Tepco Psych Repair. Today we're going to be working on this NT700V. We're going to be lowering it. Um, so in order to do that, we're going to have to pull the shock out. To get the shock out, we got to pull the wheel off. I have it up on my uh, lift right here. The two bolts for the shock, there's one right in there. And I took off this plastic cover right here. It's just, it's just pull off, rubber button pull offs. And uh, so I pulled that off. So we have one right inside of there. And the other one is in the bottom. All right, it's right there. So I'm just going to get the wheel off to get it out of the way. Uh, getting the wheel off is pretty simple. Uh, with this drop on here, I'll be able to take this out and be able to get the, um, the wheel out through there. But what we're going to need to do is pull the bolt off here, get the caliper out of the way, get the spacer out of the way, and pull the wheel off. Uh, this exhaust is going to be in the way as well, so we'll just pivot, get that out of the way. All right, so we got the shock out. And basically what I did here is I was able to leave the bags and everything on. I, uh, I have a lift here that I can pull this um, section out here and drop the tire and the wheel and everything goes straight through the lift. And then just, you know, wiggling everything around up there. Here's your, uh, the brake, rear brake caliper and the bracket. You're able to just kind of move that stuff up out of the way, uh, up, up into, kind of up into here and then get the wheel kind of wheeled out. So that's out of there. You can see where the shock was mounted right here. And the other one is up top. So basically I got the one bolt and the nut, uh, nut off of this side, bolt off of there. And then up here, the other one was through here. So I got the uh, nut was on the other side and the bolt came out of this side. And then it's just kind of fishing it through. There's um, the adjuster here for the, uh, the compression on it has kind of a hose running through and there's a little bracket. I don't know if you'll be able to see, but there's a bracket right inside there that the hose goes over. So you just gotta pop, it just pops out. Just reach in and fish it out of there, pop it out. And I pulled the shock basically right through this section right here on this side of the mount. So I was able to just work it out of there, done. And I let this, um, the uh, drive shaft and everything just kind of fall down there and uh, to get out of the way as far as it would go, pulled the shock out. Now I just have everything resting on the engine stand. So um, let me show you the shock. All right, so what we're going for here is we need to compress the spring in order to take this eyelet off the, the top. So the, um, or actually it would be the bottom of the shock. So we gotta take this eyelet out. This has to be compressed. This is not gonna be easy. This is a heavy duty spring right here. Um, you can't just, uh, there's no tensioner to release so that you can get the spring off or anything. You have to compress it. So uh, I'm, what we're gonna do right now is build a spring compressor so that I'm able to compress the spring down enough to pull the eyelet off and, and swap it out. All right, so this is where we stand at right now. I have a, um, this is a half inch piece. You probably don't need a half inch, a quarter will probably do it. Um, I, I just, I'm, I have bad luck with spring compressors in the past, so I wanted to make this one so that it wouldn't slide and wouldn't move and uh, it wouldn't bend, so there'd be no issues with it. So this is what I have together here now. Um, I got a box section down here and the, there's a bolt here threaded rod, heavy duty thick threaded rod, and then I have a washer and a bolt, same as on the bottom. Uh, and this will easily pull this down and nothing will flex and nothing, nothing will bend. So what we're gonna do first is I'm, now that I know that everything is set up and it's gonna work, I'm gonna take it apart. I'm gonna take the bearings and everything out of here because we may have to heat this to get this off. Put it back in the um, vise right here. I'll compress it down and then we'll unscrew this right here, probably uh, use some heat to get it off of the uh, shock shaft and we should be good to go. Gotta be careful using heat in any of this stuff. I'm gonna try to do a cold uh, and if I have to do heat, the minimal amount. If there's any Loctite in there, we're gonna have to you know, use a little bit of heat in there, but we're gonna try to avoid that. Uh, so let me get all the bearings and seals out of here and then I'll get this all set up and compress the spring. All right guys, so I'm pushing the uh, bearings out here. I'm using an inch and a 16th on this side and the smaller socket is a uh, 11 16 and the seals come out really easy. I just put a flathead in there real gently and just pried the seal out so you don't damage the seal and then push it out the other side. It'll push the other seal out and then go ahead and keep pushing. I'm just gonna keep tightening this in and get that bearing all the way up. All right guys, so this is where we're at now and I feel confident with this setup. It's solid, it's not going anywhere. I'm using a uh, 7 8 inch wrench and it's just enough room for me to um, fit it underneath there, okay? So that's gonna go underneath there. I'll use the adjustable. Now it's, I don't have a metric. I have an 18 is my biggest open end and it's uh, not gonna work. So the 7 8 should be just fine. So you can see how this rotates here where there's a nut underneath there. We gotta hold the nut, crack this loose and then it should spin off. Uh, and if not, we'll have to spin that nut back until it bases out on the shaft and then we'll back that out with some heat. So 
Uh, let me get to it. All right, just cracked it loose. So there's another like marking where this is here. I want to make sure that when I put the new one, it sits right into that. And you can see where it is uh, on the faceplate. So let's see if this is going to come off for me easily or what. Spin that back. Yep, there it comes. It's coming off pretty easy. Okay, now uh, the new one says to go on at least uh, 13 millimeters so I got 13 millimeters so I'm gonna set this so right about to the where the bolt is there the bolts about another millimeter down so let me put a drop of uh, blue Loctite on there and to see the difference of these two to give you an idea this is how the thing is lowering it okay so there's that one and then this one here you're not counting that little lip right there. That's the difference right there, see? So there's your lowering amount. So let's spin this on. So I should be able to just spin this on all the way down until it bottoms out and then just uh, back it up till it's straight. And that'll be, uh, it's about 14 millimeters. It says to go in 13. So we'll be fine just spin this sucker on. All right, so there's our 13 millimeter right there. So now we got to back that uh, nut up to it. All right, I'm gonna lock the nut onto it here. Now I'm just going to let it back up and try to get it in line right where the other one was. And I, like I said, I can see the line still. So we're just going to start loosening these up. So there's a pin in here on the top plate that was made for the original one to notch in to make sure it's in the right place. It sits right here. It's going to be in the way. If I just lower that down, I believe it's just going to hit it. So we might have to rotate this a little bit. I'll show you what I'm talking about. See that pin right there? If I keep going down, it's going to hit the bottom of, of the eyelet here. So I'm going to have to rotate this a little bit and, uh, and drop it down to it and then rotate it back when I'm done and everything's uh, taken off to line up the, uh, the two eyelets because that's going to hit right there. Actually, I might have to rotate it all the way to there.
Yeah, I'm gonna have to do that. I'll rotate it to there and then I'll just spin it back. All right guys, so there it is all ready to go. Bearings in, nice and smooth. I'm gonna get and throw it back in the bike. There. All right, so we got the top one mounted. We got the bottom one mounted this way. Let's go ahead and put these uh, nuts on here. Alright, so now the hose runs in, it runs on a little tab, the bottom of the battery box, loops up to where the top of the shock is right there. Everything looks good, nothing's interfering with anything, the bolts are tight. Um, it's hard to get a torque wrench in there. I mean, I got the thing jammed on there tight, it's, they're, they're good, they have, they're locked um, nuts on there also, so uh, that's good to go. I'm going to put the back wheel on. Alright guys, so putting the wheel back in, you can see I still have all the bags and everything on. I do have a lift. It's got a drop out in it, so I'm going to lift it up enough to get the wheel up underneath here. So the wheel lifts up. I'm going to uh, work the caliper bracket and everything kind of up above it until I get the wheel in. And when I get the wheel in, I'm just going to kind of finagle it around it to get it back in. All right, so we got it back in here. I'm just going to go ahead and tighten up the uh, axle, then the pinch bolt here to hold that spacer in place. And then I'm going to tighten up the um, caliper mount right there. We'll pump the brakes up, get everything lined back up again. All right, guys, so we're all in, back, ready to go. The next thing we have to do is the kickstand, based on the instructions. And this is the instruction sheet that comes with the, uh, the lowering kit. Uh, the side stand says 15 to 20 millimeters. So you're going to have to um, 15 to 20 millimeters lower. So a couple ways to do it. You can heat it up and bend it. Kind of measure where it is off, say off the ground here, and bend it so you're 15 millimeters higher, and then see where it's saying you got plenty of room here so that that thing can come out and really not have an issue. And we also have to slide the forks up. So the forks to complete the the lowering kit, you got to slide the forks up. That's back behind here. Uh, you have to get. Let's see if I can get you a view. It's really pretty simple. You have that one with the yellow on there, the one on the top. You twist this a little bit and you slide those up. And the instructions uh, for the front says to lower it uh, 12 millimeters. So we're going to lower the triple 12 millimeters down, bringing the tubes 12 millimeters up. All right, so there's the fork tubes slid up, triple slid down 12 millimeters. All right, so I just want to show you how it sits without any modification to the kickstand. And there it is from the back. It's pretty good. I mean, I've had bikes much worse than that. I'm not sure that it really needs to be lowered. Maybe in some weird surfaces, but uh, I think that's pretty good. I plan on leaving that, and if uh, a customer wants it lowered a little bit, we'll handle that. But it looks good. All right, guys, so that's all there is to it. Uh, I just want to touch on a couple of things here. First off, I don't think I needed to take the wheel off. I really think I could have pulled that shock out right through here. and this Because this is the way it came out, and if I need a little more room, I could, I could loosen this up and pull it out of the way. I don't think I need to take the wheel off. You can probably get away without that. The... Um, this compressing the spring, I felt, was probably the the most difficult part um, because you want to make sure that when you uh, when you're doing that and you're taking the uh, spring, compressing that to take that eyelet off, that that it's set up so that even if you drop it, nothing's going to come popping. If it's dangerous, I you know just just heed you know my warning on that. Springs are no joke, and, and there's a lot of injuries that occur from that. So please uh, keep that in mind. Now um, the rest of it was pretty simple. The bike is sitting down now. I showed you the, how the bike sat with the kickstand on it. Um, I'm going to let the uh, owner decide if he wants to um, cut the kickstand. I really don't think you need to. I've had other bikes that stood up more straight than that, so I'm not too concerned about it. Um, but it's good to go, guys. You can do this.
the eyelet came off pretty easy with the spring compressed, so it's not really a big deal. I think you guys can do this if it's something you want to do. Hopefully this video helps you out, guys. I didn't see any, any other videos on it. Just a lot of people talked about it, but this bike sits considerably lower now. I feel I'm flat-footed on the ground, and I got a 34-inch, uh, uh, sorry, 32-inseam, so it's all good. Hopefully this helps you out. Please hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell for further notifications. Until next time, guys, it's Tepco Cycle Bear.